Over the last several years of coaching marathon runners, I've seen how overwhelmed they can get with the process and trying to put all of the pieces together. So today for you, I want to break down what is absolutely the most important in marathon training, put together a framework for you so that you don't have to be questioning every single move that you're making. So here are five key strategies for marathon training cycle success that will also lead to you having exactly what you need to be prepared on race day. Key one, volume is most important. Out of anything else that you can do in marathon training, it will be getting the volume that you need to have a great race at your marathon, have a resilient and strong and durable body, and be able to withstand the miles that are going to come at you in your race. So if your training plan has speed work, that's totally fine. That's going to be normal for anyone who's maybe in the middle range, the advanced range, you're going to have that. If you're a beginner, it's easy volume. You've never done this type of volume before. So it is so important that you really just focus on getting in time on feet, those miles, those kilometers, so that you can be ready every single week as that volume builds. Essentially consistent volume building throughout the block is key. I can make this so simple for you. Nothing else matters nearly as much as just getting in the runs at a comfortable, easy pace, Every week you're focusing on what you need to get done that week and you're checking it off because the reality is, is if you're missing a lot of runs, you're not going to be prepared. So the biggest thing that I want you to think about is when you are finished with this marathon training block, you want to look back and see a lot of green on your schedule. We use final surge with my team and the runs turn green when you do them. So whatever that means for you, you are checking them off you're getting them done, you wanna see very, very few runs not completed in that training block, as few as possible. So everything else that I'm gonna say here kind of falls back to volume. So you need that volume, but you need these other keys taken care of as well, because if you're missing the mark on those, they can lead to you not being well enough or rested enough or durable enough to get in the volume that you need. So kind of think of the volume as the absolute, the most important thing. And these are kind of those building blocks that you need to make sure that everything is fine underneath so that you can get the volume in that you need to be ready. So that with that, the second key is really implementing proper nutrition and hydration. Now I'm not talking really here about day-to-day quality nutrition, although that is important too. I think we all know for the most part what that looks like, but what I'm talking about is fueling properly around your runs. So making sure that you are having a proper breakfast before your runs that you're doing, that you know how to properly fuel, get that in-run fueling that you need, and that you are eating in the right way after the run so that you are getting the recovery um, after putting in those miles, especially if it is a speed session or a long run and you're putting your body through a lot, all of that is really important. And then I think it's really easy for people to kind of forget about the hydration piece. You cannot have enough energy if you're not well hydrated day to day, that's important. And the best way to kind of stay hydrated when you're going out and running and sweating a lot is also replacing those electrolytes, that sodium that you're losing in that fluid loss, that sweat. And this matters a ton in summer training, but you know, you're sweating even in the winter months when you're out in the cold weather as well. So it matters year round. Now, what I find is a lot of people with the fueling, especially, but even the hydration is that they kind of think they don't have to worry about it early on and they just don't feel so really anything over 70 minutes you should be fueling for and anything that has speed in it even if it's only 45 minutes you should be fueling for that as well a lot of questions around this I have a video so I'll make sure that I link that but I have a fueling guide that kind of just lays out exactly what you need to be doing before the run during the run after the run depending on every type of run that you're doing so I'm gonna link that below you can go ahead and snag that PDF that I think will be really really helpful for you Last thing I want to say here is you're, if you are someone who's running in a run club or running with friends, you're going to notice that a lot of these people are not fueling, not hydrating. You just need to stay in your own lane and know that this is valuable. And you really need to understand that 
Just because people are able to get away with doing that doesn't mean that it is quality and proper training. I promise you are going to be the most prepared one for your marathon if you can understand how to get those fueling and hydration pieces in place. Because if you're not a fueled runner, if you're not a hydrated runner, then you're going to bonk in those long runs as they come along. You're going to have stomach issues if you're not starting early on and getting acclimated which leads to you not getting in the volume because you're cutting run short or you're not feeling good and so you don't do the run yada 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 you guys see how this works then you know your volume is affected which we said was number one so make sure you've got that fueling and hydration in place and you're practicing early on so key three is to balance stress and rest so you're not going to really notice this that much early on in the marathon training cycle, but it's going to come at you pretty quickly that all of a sudden you're feeling a lot of cumulative fatigue, you're feeling tired, you're fe feeling run down. Um, this is par for the course to some extent, but this could easily be a sign that you're not actually getting in the proper rest and recovery that you need to be able to withstand the higher volume that you're doing as the training goes along. So. If you notice that there's a week or two where you're just feeling extra, extra fatigued, I encourage you to start really paying attention to, you know, what does your sleep look like? Are you running your recovery runs slow enough? Are you, you know, following the cutback weeks that are in your training plan, which absolutely your, your training plan needs to have cutback weeks in it. So those are just a few examples of recovery that needs to be taking place. Something that I love to tell my runners is, you're only as strong as your recovery. And so this is exactly why we have to do something like an 80-20 split where 80% of your volume is easy, 20% is hard, or maybe it's you know something even like 90-10. And that's because if we try to do 50% hard, our bodies can't recover from that. And you're then not reaping the benefits because we know that we're actually absorbing all that hard training when we're sleeping, when we're resting. And a worst case scenario with not recovering from something is that you get injured. And let's go back to number one again. If you are injured, if you are getting sick, which are all signs of not recovering properly, you're not getting in the volume and that's going to affect your overall marathon training cycle. It's just all kind of like this domino effect. So making sure that you are getting enough rest for the amount of volume that you're putting in, everybody's different. So really paying attention to how you're feeling. Number four is one that I think a lot of people forget about because they are so hyper-focused on the physical part of this. Obviously marathon training is highly physical and you are, expecting a lot out of your body, you're relying on it to make these physiological adaptations so that each week you can run longer than you did the week prior. All of that's happening and so that ends up being the athlete's focus. So I find as a coach, this is where I spend a lot of time is working on that mindset piece. So this brings us to key four, and that's remembering that mental strength in marathon training and in the marathon itself is just important as physical strength. So you need to train that mental piece just like you would the physical piece. So what does this look like? You're staying positive, you're believing in yourself, you have mantras that you can utilize day to day, you can utilize in the runs when they're getting really tough. Celebrating wins on the hard days, which I find athletes really, really struggle with, is that they want to automatically say what went wrong on that day versus trying to walk away with what's the win. Like if you have a really hard, hard long run, but you made it through, then let's talk about how you made it through and you got the volume in and you get to go back and say, you know, that's what Coach Jane said was the most important. So maybe the miles didn't look pretty today, but I got them done. Um, gaining confidence through this process and visualizing how you're going to look and feel on each of these runs and on race day. Now confidence, that comes back to really being able to each week conquer each week, seeing that volume build. So you can see how all of these continue to tie together. And if you've got that confidence, it's only going to help you go into the next week strong and obviously into the race strong as well. So lots of resources out there on mental strengthening, you know, as an endurance athlete, but just remembering that what you say to yourself up here affects 
the rest of your body and how everything's going to go. It's all attached and you're not going to have a strong race if you don't believe that you have a, can have a strong race. And so just make sure you've got that mental practice in place. So moving into number five, I think the athletes who struggle the most with marathon training are the ones who are convinced from the get-go that they are going to be motivated the entire time. Now, it's very normal for an athlete to go into marathon training really excited. They've got their race on the calendar. It's week one, they conquer week one. Every run they're excited to get out for. I'm going to tell you right now that wanes really quickly. So you need to have your discipline outweighing your motivation. If you try to rely on motivation for everything, it's going to be way too hard to get out the door. So what I recommend is that you have a routine, a schedule that you stick to so that you don't get to have these conversations with yourself where the devil on your shoulder is trying to get you out of this run that you know that you need to do. You know, obviously your bed at 5 a.m. is going to be feel really comfy and cozy. You're not going to want to get out of it. And so if you're very rigid about your routine, then you don't get to play those games with yourself in, in your head. The alarm goes off, you get up, you get out the door, which is literally the hardest part is getting out the door for the run. And so the more disciplined that you can be reminding yourself, you know, every single week, like, okay, this is what, what's on my schedule. By the end of the week, I need to have all of this done, no matter what, you know, treating it like a job, treating it like your conference calls that you have at work, you would never miss those. They're on the schedule, you get them done. This is the same way. So just remember that even elite athletes, even the people on social media who clearly love running are not motivated every day. You're not any different. Nothing's wrong with you when you're not motivated every day. It's going to get tough and challenging as it goes along. So just stay disciplined, stay the course, and you will see all of the benefits of your hard work and of your discipline and routine on race day. And let's not forget, if you're only going out for the runs that you're motivated for, you're not gonna get the volume in, which again, that is number one for being successful in your marathon race. So guys, it's important to be realistic and know that no marathon training block is going to be a piece of cake. Everybody is going to experience challenges. So when they crop up for you, you are not alone. You can have the best training block in the world, but it's not just going to be easy. And that's the point. We want this to be challenging because it's going to help us grow as humans. It's really what makes this distance so amazing in my opinion, um, but you can and should be able to get through this marathon training block strong if you follow these keys and that's my hope for you. And honestly, this is what we love to do as coaches is be your biggest supporter, your biggest cheerleader when those times are getting hard, um, making sure that you are doing the training appropriately so that you don't have to be second guessing things. So if you're interested, I will put our link below to our coaching page. And if you guys just have questions about anything, I'm an open book. I would love to answer. I love talking about running and marathon training. I so appreciate you guys being here. Thanks a lot for joining me and I'll catch you in the next one.